Welcome back. Joining us today in the studio is host of the now defunct NPR show News and Notes, but author of a new book, Kiss the Sky, Farai Chidea. Kiss the Sky follows an aspiring African-American rock musician who plans on making a comeback in New York City, all the while facing struggles with her career, religion, family, and friends. Thank you so much for being here. I wanted to do something different and have you do a little reading before we launch into the interview. Oh, Sue, this is great. So this is just a taste. Then there was my first musical love, Michael Jackson. I was six, and to my child's eyes, he seemed just enough older to know a lot of things that I wanted to learn. He was pure music, shimmering, shaking, grooving, moving, liquid hip bones, and fluid bell-bottom pant legs, denim, slouchy caps, a sexy choir boy, backed up by his older brothers, plus television, dancing lions, and tin men, a too old Diana as Dorothy. But wait, that part was later. It is kind of eerie because you wrote this a long time I ago. I did. I did. I finished this book two years ago, and um, it took a reader to tell me that this section was in there. It's just a small passage, um, but I, you know, this is about the transcendent power of music um, to transform this very troubled character's life, both as she performs it, but also as she consumes it. And I do believe that music is. Um, psychoactive for lack of a better term it can it activates all sorts of parts of your brain and you, you know, know what was interesting is I read um, was I enjoyed reading the list of songs that you had kind of that was that were woven in and each one reminds me of where I was or what I was doing at that time yes. so is this book for people in their early 40s is it for women or can anyone really have that connection anyone can have the connection but I think of course different people relate in different ways and and it is you know I'm someone who graduated from high school in 86 and college in 90 and I was um, believe it or not kind of a goth club kid <laughs> <laughs> and then when I moved to New York, I would go out like four nights a week and just dance and would go to these underground raves and subway stations. Like they'd be like, everyone meet here at 4 a.m. So you'd go and eventually the police would break it up. And that but, was before social uh, yeah, means of being able to Twitter yeah. each I've other. I've also been on the subway parties. They used to call for parties on subways and you'd all meet in one car. And, you know, I, one of the things that uh, that kind of spoke to me was that this was a fiction, correct? Yes, absolutely. And you can see so many truths in just individuals in the industry, music industry, mm -hmm. in uh, just trying to, someone who's trying to carve a career path, so many truths. How much of that was pulled from your real life? A lot of it is pulled from my real life, um, you know, some of the emotional issues, but I covered the entertainment industry and, you know, I would go backstage and into private rooms at clubs and uh, I mean really people who are in the music industry recognize these archetypes and I will say that the Rihanna Chris Brown situation really got to me because there's an abusive relationship in here it's not physical but it's psychological and I think that's important to talk about so I hope some younger women really get that. Mm -hmm. And you do have themes of love, faith as well as pop culture and addiction addiction, growth, so many human stories yeah. in here. Did you have an objective when setting out to write this that you had one, like these themes that you really wanted to hit home or did it just kind of come out? I wanted to really talk about growth and transformation and how hard it is. It's not easy, you know, whether you're trying to lose weight as I have been doing, you know, trying and, or anything that, that is worth doing is hard. And I wanted to talk about that. And you graduated exactly the same year as me from high school ooh, and college. And ooh. I can tell you, and I hate when people say midlife crisis because it's not a crisis. It's, it's like a reawakening. Mm -hmm. So this book is so great for people. Just want to have good laughs as well as kind of say, okay, where am I at? Yes. And where am I going? Yeah. There's lots of funny parts. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else that you want to say about Kiss the Sky in terms of why it's not just for women searching for well, I just Memories. recently got an email from a guy who said, this is the first novel I've finished in months. So there's, it's written in 90 chapters, each with a song at the top of the chapter, and it keeps you going. And it's provocative. It's, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. You can purchase Kiss the Sky at your local bookstore for information.